Recently, we've had a few questions related to reporting services. And one question that a couple of people have asked is how to refer to either a specific column in a matrix or how to refer to a specific cell in a matrix, with the aim of comparing the aggregate, either a sum or an average, between those different cells or columns. Now, while we can't directly reference a cell or a column in a matrix, we can use an if function to influence which values are included in the aggregate, the sum or the average. You may have already encountered this if you've watched video uh, 9.11 in this series using sum if count if average if expressions, you may already know how to achieve this. But just in case you missed that video and you wanted a quick look at a specific example to do with a matrix, let's have a look at how to solve this problem. So I've already set up a basic blank report and I've made a connection to my standard movies database. The next thing I'll do is create a quick data set including the fields I'll need. So I'm going to right click the movies data source and choose to add a data set. I'll call the data set Films and then use the Query Designer to just quickly select the columns I'll need. So from my Tables folder, I'm going to select everything from the Certificate table, everything from the Genre table, and then from the Film table, just the Runtime Minutes field. From there, I can click OK, and then OK again, and there's my data set created. Next, I'll create a basic matrix. So I'll right click into the background of my report and choose Insert Matrix. In the rows box, I'm going to choose to include the genre ID field. I want to base the grouping on the genre ID. Then I'm going to change the value displayed in that cell to the name of the genre. So I'll select the genre field. And then I'm just going to change the sorting of my genre ID group as well. So in the row groups panel, I'm going to right click and choose group properties. We can see the grouping is based on the ID, but I'm going to go to the sorting page and change the sorting so it's sorted by the genre name. And I'll do a similar thing for the column groups. I'll create a column group based on the certificate ID field. And then I'll change the value displayed in there from certificate ID to certificate. I want the sorting to be based on the certificate ID, so I'm not going to change anything in the column group. Then in the data cell, I'm going to start by including the runtime minutes field, and that will provide me with a sum of runtime minutes, which is what I want. And then just to make sure that I don't encounter this font rendering bug, which you may have seen yourself when you run a report and you don't see anything in the table or the matrix you've created. So I've just switched from one from the standard font to a different font and then back again. And then if I just run the report and make sure that I've got some sensible results, there should be our basic matrix. The two questions that I highlighted earlier were both concerned with comparing the values in specific columns of this matrix. So for example, we want to compare the values for the 12 and PG certificate films, or indeed any other combination of columns from the same matrix. To help demonstrate this, I'm going to begin by adding a total column to this matrix. So a new column to the right hand side that just shows the grand total runtime for that entire genre. Now there are a couple of different ways we can do this back in the design view. I could just right click on the data cell there, the sum of runtime, and choose add total column. If I wanted to do this manually, however, I can also right click at the top of the column header, choose insert column, and the important thing that I must do here is choose outside group. So I'm going to go outside group right, and then I can select the runtime minutes field from the field selector again, and that will basically do exactly the same thing as adding a total column. So if I run the report at this point, I'll get the grand total for each individual genre, ignoring the grouping by certificate. Next, I'd like to change this expression so that it calculates the sum of runtime for just the PG certificate films. And to do that, we can nest an if function inside the sum function we've just created. So back in the design view, we can right click on the sum of runtime minutes in our new column, and then choose expression to open the expression builder. And what I'd like to do is insert my if function just inside the sum function here. Just to help with the layout of this, I'm going to take this field of runtime minutes value down a couple of lines. And then just below the sum function, I'll type in a few spaces and then begin my if function IIF. Open up some round brackets. On the next line, I want to check if the value of the certificate field is equal to the letters PG. So to do that, I'm going to go to the fields list and double click the certificate field to insert that and check if it's equal to the letters PG included in some double quotes there. If that's true, I want to type in a comma and then I want to use the value of the runtime minutes field. If that condition isn't true, however, I'm going to type in a comma at the end of the runtime minutes value. What I want to do is use a value of either zero or nothing. 
Now for a sum function, it doesn't really matter too much whether we use a zero or a nothing here, but this will make a big difference if we're doing things like averages. So rather than just using a zero, I'm gonna use the nothing. So I've got the close round brackets for my if function. I just need an extra set of close round brackets for my sum function. So that's the entire expression created. If we hit OK at that point and then run the report again, we should now see that that column shows you the same value as for the PG certificate films for that specific genre. So now if we want to compare PG certificate films with, let's say, 12A certificate films, we just need another copy of that same sum if combination in the same expression. So let's head back to the design view, right click on the expression we've just created, choose expression, and then I'm just going to copy everything except for the equal sign there. I'll type in a minus symbol after my first sum if combination and then paste in my new sum if combination on the next line. All I now need to do is change the name of the certificate I'm testing for. So this time let's go with 12A. And then if we click OK and run the report again, we're now seeing a comparison of the PG certificate films minus the 12A certificate films. So comparing two specific columns isn't really that difficult. Once you've mastered nesting an if function inside your aggregate function, you can compare any two columns in this matrix. But if we were trying to compare every other column of the matrix against the PG certificate, it would be quite tedious to have to write a separate expression for every other column. So let's try to be a little more clever about things. To demonstrate this next bit, I'm going to head back to the design view and I'm just going to modify the design of this matrix a little bit. I'm going to change the width of the columns and I'd like to just create a copy of this matrix so that we can compare it with the new one that we're just about to create. So I'm just going to quickly copy and paste that matrix and place that side by side. So we've just got two copies of the same thing at this point. Now I'd like to change this first matrix so that within each certificate group, I want to show the value for the PG certificate for that specific genre. Let's try to do that back in the design view by using our sum if combination. I'm going to right click on my runtime expression for our summary column and choose to view the expression builder. Then let's just take the original sum if combination to show the sum of runtime for PG certificate films. I'll copy that. And then I'm going to go to the expression for the sum of runtime in the main data cell of the matrix, choose expression, and then just replace the existing sum of runtime minutes with our sum if combination. If we click OK then and run the report, we won't see quite what you might expect. The PG column does indeed still show the sum of runtime for PG certificate films, but every other genre just shows a blank or a nothing. And that's because each of these certificate columns has already filtered out any films which aren't part of that certificate. So these individual columns don't have access to the PG certificate films, so it can't sum the runtimes of those films. In order to make this work, we'll need to modify the scope applied to our sum function so that each of our certificate column groups has access to all of the values for every certificate. So to make that work, we can go back to the design view. And first of all, I'm just going to change this expression in the main data cell of this matrix back to the original sum of runtime minutes. What I now want to do is make sure that that sum function applies to the genre ID group. So I don't just want the sum for that specific combination of genre and certificate. I want the sum of all the runtimes for the genre ID group. So I can right click on that data cell and choose expression. And then within the round brackets here, at the end of the reference to the runtime minutes value, I can type in a comma and then type in, in some double quotes, the name of the group scope. So I'm going to go for genre ID in double quotes. And then if I click OK, what we'll see now if I run the report is that each of our cells shows you the grand total runtime for all the films in that genre. Now that we've widened the scope of the function to include all of the certificate groups, we need to narrow the focus back down again to include just the PG certificate. So to do that, we can head back to the design view 
And I'm going to go back to our summary expression in the, uh, the PG versus 12A certificate films and choose expression. And I'm just going to copy that same sum if combination again. Now I'm going to go back to the main data cell, right click on that and choose expression. And probably the easiest thing to do here is just replace the entire expression in one go. And then after the if function, we can add on that scope parameter to the sum function. So let's type in a comma at the end of the if function, close round brackets. And then on the next line, in some double quotes, refer to the genre ID group in some double quotes. So that's the entire expression. If we now click OK and run the report again, we should see that for each individual genre, every certificate column now shows the value for the PG certificate films. To complete the comparison then, we simply need to subtract the value we've just calculated here from the actual value for that combination of genre and certificate. So to do that is really straightforward. Back in the design view, we can right click on the expression for our main data cell and choose expression. And then at the beginning of the expression, we can use the sum function to find the sum of the runtime minutes field and then subtract the sum if combination. So if we click OK at that point and then run the report, we'll see that each cell now shows how that particular genre and certificate combination compares to the PG certificate films for the same genre. If we wanted to show a blank cell for any combination of genre and certificate which doesn't have any films in it, we can use another if function to do that. Back in the design view, we can right click on the expression for our main data cell again and choose expression. I'm just going to quickly copy the sum of runtime minutes value expression. And then in front of that, we can create a new if function. So let's just take that down a line and say if, open some round brackets, is nothing, open some round brackets, and then paste in that sum function. I'll close an extra set of round brackets, then type in a comma. And if that's true, I want to show nothing in the cell, then another comma, otherwise we'll perform the same calculation we've performed here. I'm not going to bother changing the layout of all this, but I do need to add one extra close round bracket right at the end of the expression. So having done that, if I click OK and then run the report again, we should now see blank cells where there's no value to compare. It might also be nice to hide the comparison columns so that we don't just see this column full of zeros and then maybe use our additional summary column here to show the value that all of the other certificates are being compared with. So to do those two things, let's head back to the design view. We'll do the easy part first. Let's change the expression for our summary column so that it shows the total runtime for PG certificate films. So that will just involve removing the second sum if function combination to show just the value for PG certificate films. So then we can maybe modify the, uh, the total here. So runtime for PG films or something like that. Then in order to hide the PG column, we can modify the hidden property of the appropriate report item. Now be careful about this because it's you can see the hidden property in a few different places in reporting services. Uh, a common mistake is to highlight a column or a block of cells or a row of cells and then find the hidden property of just those cells. So you'll find that in the properties window over here at the right hand side. So if I select the hidden property and click the drop down list here and then choose expression, we can write an expression that calculates either true or false. And I want to check equals certificate equals PG. So that returns the value true if the column is PG and that will make the hidden property true if that's the case. Now technically that will work if I run the report, it will indeed hide that column, but it doesn't collapse the space taken up by the column in the report. So get, to get this to work properly back in the design view, I'm going to go back to that same hidden property and I'm going to copy all the code I've just written there and then change this back to false. And then in the column groups panel, I'm going to select the certificate ID column group, find the hidden property here 
and then I'm going to paste in the same expression I've just copied. I can then click OK and then run the report again and this will both hide the column and collapse the space taken up by it. I think at this stage we can probably get rid of our second matrix as well. So back in the design view, let's select that second matrix and just delete it. And then we can just change the width of that last column there, just so it's a little bit easier to read. And there we go. There's a fairly useful matrix which shows a comparison of every single column against a specific single column. As a final flourish, what would be really nice would be to allow the end user to control which column is being compared with all the other columns. And to do that, we can create a parameter. Let's head back to the design view, and I'm going to start by adding a new data set to populate a drop down list parameter. So I'm going to right click on movies and choose add data set. I'm going to call this one certificate list. And all we're going to do here is allow the user to select from a list of certificate names. So from the query designer, the simplest thing to do is just select the certificate column from the certificate table and then click OK and OK again. Now I can create a parameter in the report. I'm going to right click the parameters folder and choose add parameter. Alternatively, I can right click in the blank area around the outside of the report and choose to view the parameters panel. And then I can right click into this grid at the top and choose to add a parameter to that. It doesn't matter which of the two places you choose to create your parameter. Let's call this one certificate to compare. And then the prompt will be choose certificate. The data type is going to be text. And we're going to go to the available values page next and choose to get the values for this drop down list from a query or a data set. So we're going to choose certificate list and the value field. Well, we only have one field in the data set, so we'll choose certificate for both the value and for the label. At that point, we can click OK. And if we just have a quick look at running the report, just to check that the drop down list is working correctly, that all looks pretty good. Now we just need to be able to reference this parameter value in multiple places in our matrix. So first of all, let's just modify the runtime for PG films expression. I'm going to right click on that expression and choose expression. And then rather than referring to the text PG here, I'm going to change that. So it refers to the value of the parameter we've just created. So I can go to the parameters category and double click the certificate to compare. I can then click OK. I'd like to show that same certificate name appearing in this column header here as well. So rather than showing PG films, I'm going to delete the text PG. Then I'm going to right click into that text box and choose create placeholder. And this allows me to build an expression within a string of text. So I'm going to go to the value property there and hit the FX button. And then once again, go to the parameters category and double click certificate to compare. I can then click OK and OK again, and then just tidy that up a little bit. So I've got spaces in the appropriate place. OK. Next, I'm going to go to the expression for the main data cell and choose expression again. And then let's see Well, we've got the letters PG once again. We can replace that and then we can say uh, parameters and then certificate to compare. And then we can click OK again. And then finally, we want to modify the hidden property as well. So let's select the certificate ID column group. And then in this expression for the hidden property, we can change the text PG for a reference to our new parameter. OK, so I think I've got them all at that point. Let's see how, uh, how thorough I've been. If I run the report, let's choose PG to begin with and make sure that everything appears as it did earlier on. That looks pretty good to me, looks pretty familiar. Runtime for PG films. Let's try for 15 films then instead and view the report. That should produce some slightly different results. So that's good. Let's go for 18 and go again. Yeah, all looking reasonably good at this point. So there we go. There's a fairly useful, I think, report that allows the user to control exactly which values you're comparing in your matrix. Hope you found some of that useful. Thanks very much for watching. We'll see you next time.